Hi, and welcome back to Parenting on Pause, the section of our website where we help parents find that elusive five minutes for themselves through a variety of tips and tricks. I'm here with Adrian, a licensed social worker and EPIC program coordinator. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Liz. And today we are going to talk boundaries. So first of all, parenting right now is more 24 seven than it has ever been. Parents are exhausted. Um, but the idea of setting boundaries still seems to come with a lot of guilt for parents, thinking that they yeah. need to be on all the time. What would you say to parents who maybe want to set some boundaries or take some time for themselves, but feel bad doing so? I think I can identify with that, um, especially when my children were younger, like going back to work, like just as a working mom in general, um, it's a it's a difficult thing to navigate. Um, however, even with the guilt, you still deserve to have time to yourself, even though right now this is a very unique time. So if you have, um, you know, if you have like maybe newborns to that one to two age, newborns, you may want to take some time to yourself, you know, when they go down for a nap. And if that means you nap too, that's fine. Um, versus, you know, cleaning up something or getting some extra work done. Just know that when you're, you're newborn naps, like you should be, you know, you should be sleeping too. For the toddlers, when they start to get to that 18 month, um, maybe to that, I want to say like that two or three age, it can be a little bit more difficult. The easiest thing to do though is kind of get on their level and explain what's going on. You know, mommy or daddy, you know, I'm working now in the living room. Um, when we have lunch, we'll have, you know, we'll have lunch together. Or when, you know, mommy comes out of the room, we'll do a story together. Just let them know what is happening um, during the day for the smaller ones, because smaller kids, they don't have a really great concept of time. And then when they're like, I would say when they're like four, I want to say like four, five, and six, you still want to get on their level and still let them know that you do have work to do and that you do value spending time with them. But again, you kind of want to set the expectation of how that's going to go for your home. Um, you want to just give them signals, which is important to let them know what's, what's going to happen when. That usually makes children feel a little bit uh, more secure because right now, school, which is one of the like, primary things that kids do, is not happening right now. So that can cause kids to have a bit of anxiety and then now you're home all the time so things are changing and it's helpful if you talk to kids in the house about how things are kind of going to go. Um, when they're older, I think like when they're like seven, eight, nine and up, you can just have a conversation, you know, with them about what's going on. I think with teenagers, they kind of have an idea <laughs> if you're, you know, working in the living room or what's happening. Um, I know sometimes they may not, but I think the thing with teenagers is sometimes they're just not aware. So if you're on a Zoom call and they walk by and like their towel and <laughs> their towel and stuff, you might just want to let them know, hey, make sure you're checking the time. I'm going to be on a call at nine, you know, make sure you're dressed or whatever the case is. That can be with teenagers. But I think it's harder when the kids are a little bit smaller um, because one, they might not used to seeing you as a parent home all the time so they feel like oh yeah you're here with me when no it's i it's i am here with you but i also do have work to do and the guilt i think that just comes with i don't know being a parent <laughs> um still take the time even with that little bit of get just just do it anyway like still make sure that you're letting your kids know what's happening as far as work from home and then go from there um, that's what I would suggest because it is it is hard. It's just hard parenting, and I don't know if that working parent guilt ever really goes away. You just kind of have to manage it the best that you can. And then talking about taking the time, how much time is realistic for a parent to expect to take for themselves every day? I think I think it depends on you and your child. Most parents like know their children, so you know. And if you have multiple kids, you know their personalities. So I think realistically, you're able to kind of know for yourself if you can take after you get all your work done, whatever that day looks like, because now you don't have a commute. So normally 
when you punch out at, you know, four o'clock or you punch out at five, you have like a half hour, 20 minute walk or ride back home. You now don't have that piece of it. So you may not get that whole 20 minutes, but maybe there's five minutes that you get to yourself or you journal or do a one minute meditation or something for yourself. I don't know, you know, if you get some snacks in your room, like you, <laughs> you eat those snacks alone without sharing, you'll know um, whether you can take five minutes to yourself. Maybe your kids are older. Maybe you can get a movie an hour or something to yourself before they need you. But I think for parents, they really have to gauge that with like the personalities and what the needs of their kids are in the home. But I do recommend that everybody at least has like one minute and that one minute can make a difference. So whether that minute is you waking up before everyone and having a sip of coffee or some tea, or maybe it's super late at night when the house is quiet, something for yourself um, that you do. But as far as how much time to expect, that really depends on your children and what they need. And then we've said it so many times on this channel in so many different ways, but the importance of taking that time for yourself. What are some of the benefits or why is it important that parents find that even 30 seconds to a minute for themselves periodically throughout the day? So first it will help you parent better because it'll improve your mood. So even with um, everything that's going on, all these external factors and a lot of unknowns, just taking time to 30 seconds to a minute, it makes all the difference. It will help you be like less irritable um, with your kids because now they're constantly like around. <laughs> It'll give you a moment to kind of center yourself. And I think that even after two or three days of just taking a minute to yourself, you'll recognize that you're not as, you know, oh, I'm not as irritable. Things aren't bothering me, you know, as much. Oh, the kids are all yelling at each other, but for whatever reason, I'm not as, you know, upset about it. So that's, that's the most important thing about taking that minute and taking those moments for for yourself um the other thing i want to say is you deserve to have that time to yourself you're worthy of taking care of yourself um, at this time and even when we come through the other side of this whatever that looks like as a parent like as a person you're just worth taking that time to yourself awesome thank you so much adrian yeah no problem so for a recap of our conversation today, as well as a lot more tips and tricks on how to find that time for yourself, you can head to our website, epicforchildren.org, to the Parenting on Pause section. We'll see you next time. Bye.